Hi there, and welcome to The Works. I'm Ben Chay. And I'm Ben Peltier. In today's show, Barbie with a Difference, as Phil Akashi and Caroline Notte present a photography series in which the popular doll takes on many new roles. And we have two very different musical treats for you later in the show. Avant-garde Slovenian band Liebach have been called the most dangerous band in the world. We'll also have something a little more mellow, as the Terra Chung trio bring their brand of jazz to our studio. First, though, from April the 17th to last Sunday, Hong Kong's Cyberport was the unusual location for two plays by one of the greatest dramatists of all time, William Shakespeare. The plays were The Taming of the Shrew and The Tragedy of Julius Caesar. But just what or who brought them there? Where is he, Tranio? Well, that's now it twice. So, Princess Time and Pedro shall be get. Um, I came up with the idea four years ago. Um, I moved to Hong Kong six years ago, and when I moved here, I was shocked that Hong Kong did not already have one, because in the US, everywhere, there is already a Shakespeare festival in all the cities. No matter how small, how big, everyone has one. So to me, a city as large as Hong Kong, not to have one was pretty amazing. Okay, so I don't know where you want to put them. And I know that the minimum wage is 30 Hong Kong dollars per hour. So I know some people cannot afford to go to the theater. And I worked with Band 3 students when I was a teacher here for many, many years. And many of my students had never seen a drama show for real because they, their parents could not afford it. So for me, I wanted to do a theater show that a child, no matter how rich or how poor their parents are, could afford to see. It took four years for Megan McGurgan to make this outdoor Shakespeare festival a reality. But for her, all the paperwork and the preparation were worth it. She feels that art is a language everyone can speak, and giving children early exposure to creativity is important. Megan sees theatre as an art form that allows children to express themselves and learn how to tell their stories in new and inventive ways. Here we come. With Taming of the Shrew, they live, kids in Hong Kong have to live up to their parents all the time. They have to do what daddy says, do what mommy says, always be the good girl, always be the good boy. And Taming of the Shrew is exactly that. Petruchio is told to be a man. Kate is told to be a good girl, and I always see Hong Kong little girls and little boys be told that. Like, and for me, it's relevant to Hong Kong kids and growing up in society, even though it was written so long ago. Poor Matt Petruchio's wife, if it would please him to come and marry her. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, the physical part, uh, the kids will obviously laugh, uh, but Shakespearean text, it's very sarcastic. Yes. It, takes uh, jabs at certain people, so uh, the older people in the audience will get the jokes and laugh at them. So there's a bit of something for everybody. Get your speech. Sweet as springtime flowers. Ow! Lord, bite the lip. Not lip, it's a slanderous world. God fool, to whom thou keeps command? Oh, slip. Oh, never take me a grove. That Shakespeare isn't something you should be scared of. It's something that you should uh, get to know and enjoy and embrace. The internet, mainly Facebook, Twitter, because we have no money for advertising. So our whole budget for the festival was 50,000 Hong Kong dollars. We did all of this for this. I really enjoyed working with Megan for Shakespeare in the Port. Um, we at Fringebacker helped provide the fundraising platform for her to make the festival a reality. Oh, when she first came to us, um, I was very impressed. Um, I think especially, you know, this is the first Shakespeare in the Port um, festival in Hong Kong. Um, she was very passionate as well. But um, at that point, she was so desperate because um, she had missed 
um, calculated some of the costs in relation to the licensing, in, in relation to some of this um, procurement of licenses um, in, in order to, you know, um, to execute um, the whole festival outdoor. So um, she was very desperate for that shortfall and she was almost about to call that off. So we, we saw that um, um, situation and we we're very glad to be of help. I think I want to just show them what the potential of art in Hong Kong is. No one has ever done this before because they thought that Hong Kong audiences wouldn't like it or they thought that it would not be successful. Obviously, Hong Kong audiences do like it and it is successful, so I'm hoping to change their minds on that. Barbie has been much loved by generations of little girls and much criticized by feminists who say she represents a completely false idea of womanhood. In a current exhibition aiming to broaden the concept of what the doll might mean to young women, Phil Akashi and Caroline Notte give secondhand Barbie dolls a new life. Or many new lives. It's a series about the evolution of the role of women in, in societies. And we decide to call it Kill Be Doll Never Dies. We want to present the woman as a immortal, as a eternal. We decided to use like uh, second-hand dolls we found in market to give the dolls a second life and kind of eternality. We would like to, in this series, to question. We observe and we question. Uh, we try to see uh, the world a little bit differently. Uh, we take some risk and we try to provoke a little bit to bring new questions. Actually, uh, we believe the, um, the woman is uh, the, key, the key driving force of our society. Without women, we are, uh, we are nothing. As a man, um, I, re I truly believe uh, woman is the, is the energy to our happiness, to our development, to our future. We believe it's the, an indispensable uh, element uh, for the survival of men. In some part of the world, some women have to, to fight for a, a basic or fundamental freedom. And um, that's what we wanted to express here in, um, in this composition. Um, you, can, you can see it's like uh, five women who are like wearing a sort of a burqa. And um, uh, we observe uh, that situation, um, but we present the, the woman with uh, a burqa. But as you can see, they are totally naked, um, which is a little bit controversial. We had different like Asian uh, Chinese characters on every, uh, every doll. So that's a little bit using different message uh, to make a link between Asia and Europe. Um, it's a way also, especially, to uh, bring optimism. We are saying, look, this woman seems really happy. It's a lot of colors, it's a lot of happiness, and that's our message. We want to bring a positive message. I'm using uh, Asian seals as a central element of my art. In this series, I dare to escape the comfort zone and to revisit the seals by bringing them in a photography series. We really love the Chinese characters. It for us is something really aesthetic. We wanted to add symbols of emancipation and resistance to the series. It's also an allusion to my visual signature as an artist. It's a, like a, a three years project. Um, Actually, my sister is an architect and photographer, and uh, I'm a painter mostly. It was really fun and exciting and courageous to, to go on. And you know, when a, a brother and a sister are, are living so far away from each other, it's really good to share something and to work together on something. Uh, so it was, uh, it was excellent. Welcome back. In March, the avant-garde industrial rock group Liebach performed in Hong Kong for the first time. They come from Slovenia, formerly part of Yugoslavia, and music is just one of the many artistic activities in which they are involved. Liebach make music. 
They also make paintings, videos and books of philosophy. The organizer of their Hong Kong concert, Culture Industries Association Hong Kong, or CIAHK, says that the band's works are stamped with its own history. CIAHK's aim wasn't only to present a concert to the Hong Kong audience, but also a series of cultural events. They say Laibach has a lot more to offer than just music. The old program we've been uh, implementing is called Laiba, the New Cultural Revolution. So within uh, this title, we have organized and curated this exhibition. As well as um, we've organized a, a seminar, Laiba seminar at City University of Hong Kong, the day before they perform. Actually, who they are are the really bigger phenomenon than a musical uh, entity. That's why uh, we have used our space, uh, CIA Gallery, uh, to make a display of works that has been produced by Laiva. Um, now, they're all reproductions, although we tried very hard to have original artworks. They created NSK, uh, which a lot of people know about, and it's Neue Slovenia Kunst, which is new art from Slovenia. This NSK is also political in the sense that taking something that already exists, so an image of um, Mondrian, René Magritte, um, Malevich, and sort of create collages to achieve another type of meaning. During the Civil War, they actually ceased to exist. They disbanded the NSK and became a virtual country. A country that has no territories physically and no Congress. They issue NSK passports for about 300 Sarajevo citizens for them to escape Sarajevo at the time of the war, which is a very you know, important um, point they're making. Since then it became a country and then they are, now they have 35,000 NSK citizens, I think, and they have regular congressional hearings and congressional meetings um, all over the world. Leibach came out of 1980s in Tribolia, um, in a small coal mining town of Slovenia. What's important for myself, as well as I think for Hong Kong, is to have a, have a band like Leibach coming here. You'd be surprised how much history, in coincidence, we share with Slovenia. Their civil war, their colonial past, communist, economic collapse. I think all these elements, Hong Kong has a lot to learn from. The way of dealing with things politically, ideologically and artistically. There is a bit of live bark that we can all have and will make things better. Leibach started as a group of people who really wanted to do a bit more than just music, but uh, we kind of, we believed that music was the most interesting, most expressive uh, media. I think that the message everybody has to create by themselves, you know, we are just giving uh, people opportunity to, to actually to imagine, to make some kind of conclusion. This is what Leibach does, we, we come somewhere and, you know, the, the, the governments collapses, uh, uh, systems changes, you know, we, we recently played in Ukraine before the war, and it, it's our speciality. We are kind of the, um, you know, we bring, the, we bring change, we bring revolution. <laughs> We are, in a way, for some years now in a not nice economical situation. We have government that is weakly supported by the, the public. I mean, economical crisis that just keeps going and there is nothing, I mean, that doesn't look like it's going to change for the better anytime soon. But what I wanted to say is that Apparently, this decade 
you know, the news reports something, but you know uh, how the media is. They report what they are told to report, and maybe sometimes after reading and watching, uh, you know, many hours of, of coverage on certain things, you still have to like be very creative yourself to, to make an actual idea as to what to think about all of this and where to find what you would believe was true. Tara Vajang is a young Hong Kong-born guitarist who now lives in New York City. He's already taken his music to many parts of the world and performed with Latin Grammy Award winner bassist Eddie Gomez, as well as world-renowned musicians like Bernard Wright, George Garzoni, Billy Drummond, and Taylor Eichstee. Recently, he's been performing in Hong Kong. This week, he's in our studio with Tereva Jung Trio. Well, you're here with us here in Hong Kong this time for a special performance this coming Friday. What can you tell me about that? Um, I'll be playing with my organ trio in Asia. Um, it's Karong Chop on the organ and all the way from Singapore. And So Wen Ming on the drums, also from Singapore. So, and we're also playing with uh, this really great singer, Charlie Lim, and along with Bianca Wu as a special guest. So this Friday, really excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell me about some of the uh, plans that you have for the future? Uh, I'm actually really excited to play with Eddie Gomez again uh, later in the year in Taichung and Hong Kong. So I'm really excited about playing with Eddie again after two years. So hopefully I get better, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and also I'll be writing uh, next month, I'll be writing for like a string quartet along with some singer-songwriter friends of mine. So actually Mara came up to the show before, so I'll feature her for a few songs and stuff like that. And, and along some motor project with some street dancer, actually, some hip hop, R&B, so, so just try to do anything. How can folks keep track of you, uh, mm. either by s social media or keep track of what gigs you have coming up? Um, yeah, you can uh, look it up on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash and we'll be really happy to share my stuff with you. And what can we get you guys to do for us here in the studio? Uh, we are about to play an arrangement of uh, this beautiful tune by Hoagie Kamaiko, it's called Skylark. Thank you. 